Welcome to Easy Anatomy. I'm going to cover now vagus nerve in neck. Okay, vagus nerve, which is cranial nerve number ten. Let me start from the beginning. Medulla, spinal cord, and here is foramen magnum. Then you have jugular foramen. Okay. You will see that vagus nerve have, is a mixed nerve. When I say mixed, it means has sensory fibers, has motor fibers, parasympathetic fibers. With the, when it comes to sensory fibers, we have two kinds of sensation. A general test and general you have somatic and you have visceral from viscera or from skin and tissues so vagus nerve actually since we have multiple fibers or different kind of fibers you will see that it has different kind of nuclei the motor nucleus is going to be nucleus ambiguous which send this motor fiber and the motor fiber of vagus through superior laryngeal branch, laryngeal branch, which you divide into internal laryngeal and external laryngeal, then vagus will give another nerve, is called the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, so another branch is called pharyngeal nerve, pharyngeal nerve. So we have three branches which are motor, this is pharyngeal, form a plexus of nerves, it's called the pharyngeal plexus. This pharyngeal plexus supplies muscles of palate and the muscles of pharynx. There is one exception in each, I'm going to talk about them. Then superior laryngeal nerve, superior laryngeal nerve is dividing into external laryngeal nerve supplying one muscle which is cricothyroid. Recurrent laryngeal nerve is going to supply all other muscles of larynx, of larynx. So all laryngeal muscle except cricothyroid, all laryngeal muscles except Cricothyroid muscles. Okay, so this is recurrent laryngeal nerve. How about now? This is nucleus ambiguous. A uh, nucleus ambiguous. Okay, the nucleus ambiguous again is responsible for the motor fibers coming from vagus. Then we have sensory nucleus, which is basically general sensory nucleus is a common nucleus for more than one cranial nerve it's called the spinal accessory it's called a spinal accessory sorry it's called the spinal trigeminal nucleus the trigeminal nucleus which receives sensation from the head also receives sensation through vagus nerve from the larynx so let us give it color code which is red color so this internal laryngeal nerve has some fibers carrying sensation from the upper half of the larynx and going backward here and go to, go to spinal trigeminal nucleus. Okay, this is the somatic nucleus of trigeminal nerve. Okay, so this is which one? Internal laryngeal nerve upper half of larynx. Recurrent laryngeal nerve receives sensation from lower half of the larynx and ascend again and go to the spinal trigeminal nucleus from lower half of the larynx. There is auricular branch, auricular branch which carrying sensation from the auricle and the external auditory meatus this is auricular branch of vagus. Again, go to the trigeminal nucleus. There is meningeal branch inside the cranial cavity in the posterior cranial fossa also 
carrying sensation, general sensation, and you take it to the spinal nucleus. So again, this red color representing general sensation carried by internal laryngeal nerve from the upper half of the larynx, recurrent laryngeal nerve from lower half of the larynx, auricular branch from the external auditory meatus and the outer surface of tympanic membrane, meningeal branch, etc. Then this nerve, internal laryngeal nerve, carrying another kind of sensation which is test sensation from the posterior part of the tongue. It's, this is blue color and taking it back to the brain where it end into another nucleus is called nucleus solitarius. It's called what? Nucleus solitarius. Nucleus solitarius. So this is internal, still we are talking about internal laryngeal nerve. From internal laryngeal nerve carrying a testy sensation from the epiglottic region and the posterior part of the tongue. So internal laryngeal nerve is purely sensory. Internal laryngeal nerve is purely sensory. From upper half of larynx, second posterior part of tongue and epiglots. How about parasympathetic? There is another nucleus, which is parasympathetic nucleus for the vagus. This is parasympathetic nucleus for the vagus. Vagus is going to send, let us give it this grayish color, is going to send parasympathetic supply to the heart, to the heart, through two cervical cardiac branches, cervical cardiac branch, superior cervical cardiac nerve and the inferior, superior and the inferior. This is to the heart, to heart, inhibit heart function, like decrease the conductivity, contractility, etc. Contractility and conductivity. So at the end of the day, you have Vagus nerve giving multiple branches in the neck. The first branch pharyngeal, sorry, the first branch you will see meningeal to the meningeal covering of the brain in posterior cranial fossa, auricular, external auditorium meatus, and then pharyngeal. Pharyngeal is motor, muscular, supplies all muscles of palate except tensor palatine which is supplied by V3. All muscle of pharynx except stylo pharyngeus which is supplied by nine. Stylo pharyngeus supplied by nine. So all muscles of the palate, all muscles of the pharynx supplied by pharyngeal branch of X through pharyngeal plexus. Okay. Then second, the, the branch number fourth here is superior laryngeal nerve. The superior laryngeal nerve is going to split into internal and external. The internal is purely sensory, external purely motor. Internal receives sensation from the upper half of the larynx and the posterior part of the tongue, including a test sensation. External laryngeal nerve supplying one muscle is called the cricothyroid muscle. Cricothyroid muscle. This is the only laryngeal muscle supplied by external laryngeal nerve. Recurrent laryngeal nerve is a mixed nerve. First, supplying all muscles of the larynx, except the cricothyroid. Second, they receive sensation from the larynx below the level of vocal cord. So recurrent laryngeal nerve supplying all muscle of larynx except cricothyroid. Receive sensation from 
larynx below vocal cord level it means lower half of the larynx also recurrent laryngeal nerve will send cardiac branches to the heart also cardiac branch to the heart this form together the cardiac branches of vagus and recurrent laryngeal nerves they form what we call it cardiac plexus cardiac plexus we'll learn more about it in the chest okay so those are branches of vagus in the neck uh, one important thing you need to remember that right recurrent laryngeal nerve arises from vagus in the neck left recurrent arises from vagus in the thorax and the reason for that because in the left side you have ligamentum arteriosus which used to be ductus arteriosus which keep left recurrent laryngeal nerve down in the chest however right recurrent laryngeal nerve you don't have ductus arteriosus to hold it down in the chest that's why it arises in the neck okay okay uh, one more thing remember the close proximity of external laryngeal nerve to superior thyroid artery recurrent laryngeal nerve to inferior thyroid artery or inferior laryngeal artery either superior thyroid artery inferior thyroid artery and if something happen here to the external laryngeal nerve or recurrent laryngeal nerve will impact the function of the larynx to the degree if there is bilateral lesion of recurrent laryngeal nerve there will be risk of suffocation or uh, obstruction of the airway as we're gonna learn later on because recurrent laryngeal nerve supplying the only supply the only abductor of vocal cord the only abductor of vocal cord if imagine that you have the two vocal cord and recurrent laryngeal supplying the abductor which keep them away from each other if there is any injury it means that the vocal cords getting close to each other and block the airway okay and we'll focus later on in different videos uh, focus on clinical applications of everything thank you